Well, yes, Evans, um, we are dealing with BOG fairly to the extent that we are asking the governor and the two deputies to resign because they've been co-architects of this, our economic hardship. Yeah, Dr. Addison and his two deputies are co-architects of this economic hardship that we are facing. The time they were printing 35 billion for the government in 2021, didn't they know that it will have repercussions? The time they printed 45 billion for the government in 2022, didn't they know it will have repercussions? And this one, the IMF shouldn't have stepped in this way. They don't really have to come in. Otherwise, it's like they, they're just getting in the line of fire. When I saw the IMF statement, you know what? It took me back to the 1980s, uh, 78, 1981. You know, when uh, Ex-President Manley, uh, Manley of uh, Jamaica suggested to Thatcher, Reagan, and Co. that, look, we should set up a UN bank that can lend to developing countries on better terms than this IMF. On better terms than this IMF. Thatcher told us, you know, because uh, Manley got troubles, you know, uh, well, actually, the one side of the history shows that the CIA supported Edward Seeger to win that election. So, so Manley lost the election. 1978, he did a mini conference on this matter. Then by 1981, just a year before the next, the main conference on this, getting IMF out of the way so that we'll have a UN bank that will deal with this on better terms. It is said that CIA supported Edward Seeger to win the Jamaican elections. That's how C uh, this, uh, Manley was taken out. And then once money was taken out, Reagan and Thatcher were free. So when the Ghanaian government tried to push, so with uh, Jamaica taken out, it was now left with Tanzania and Ghana that pushed Reagan and Thatcher. Oh, it was easy to just ignore uh, this and Ghana and Tanzania on this matter. So IMF should be the last institution to come and support Bank of Ghana on this matter. We had over how many, 40 years ago, it was saying that their own structures and all that are not good for our development. Yet, because they want us to continue to be impoverished, they are not interested in properly changing, helping us to change our structures. They kept IMF to continue to lend to us in such a manner that we will never get out of this our poverty. So I don't want to hear IMF on this particular matter at all. They should go back to the history. Look at what Reagan and Thatcher said. Thatcher said she's not interested in a UN bank that will have majority because developing countries were in the majority, countries that were living on overdrafts, being in charge of the UN bank. You Google history, you'll find it. Yes, that's what she said. She can't bring British taxpayers money. Ma Martin, on, on this, on this specific... Martin, on this specific matter, though, I mean, the facts are the facts, right? Because if you take 60 billion, which really is the headline story on this matter, and 53 billion of that is down to the domestic debt exchange, which is not the creation of the central bank, then at least it puts that in, in perspective, does it not? No, it doesn't at all. Listen, uh, uh, Evans, it doesn't. So let's go back to the second argument. So that's why I said that. When Bank of Ghana was giving government 35 billion in 2021, didn't they know it will have consequences? When they gave government 40 billion in 2022, didn't they know it will have consequences? But, but the argument so is that without 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 that with, without argument. that the the, uh, the economy would have collapsed. The government was struggling. The international markets were close to it. They needed that money. No, it wasn't going to collapse. Okay, let, let, let's. Uh, it wasn't I want to collapse. Uh, stay Rather with me. We created it. So, stay, stay, stay with me, Martin. I want to bring. Wait, I wanna, Evan, let yes. me land. Okay. So, Evan, oh, one sentence. Yeah. On the law, mm -hmm. the five percent. So the law, the Bank of Ghana Act six one two, as amended by nine one eight, says that don't exceed uh, five percent. Central bank shouldn't lend to government beyond five percent of the previous revenue. That's revenue raised in the previous year. And when you want to exceed it. Report to Parliament. Look at subsection six. Did Bank of Ghana report to Parliament? At least they could have leaked it. Like, you know, uh, this book, Condoleezza Rice's book, No Higher Anna. In the US, when there are matters like this and it's critical, national security being involved, and of course, the economy is national security, 
There's a way you leak it. In the US, the State Department, they do it. It's constant. Democracy and leakage, they go together. If they had leaked it in a way, then the public would have come in. So Addison and his two deputies are co-architects of our economic doldrums. We are starving. We can't buy food. We can't pay rent. We can't pay school fees because of Addison, Ufuriata, and Ekufuado. And they all must resign on block. Okay. So as far as the law is concerned, you are categorical that there was a breach of the law. Yeah. Okay. What could the Bank of Ghana have done in the case when the finance ministry and the government came to them and said, please, we want to use you to close the gap? Are they allowed to say no? Absolutely. They are. Because, uh, as I referred earlier, and Chua Champo, he's done well by referring to the section 36 to 6. It says report to parliament. So it's the, it's the first part which says that when you reach the threshold, it should be reported to parliament. I'm looking for it so that we can read it out. Because once you reach the threshold, report to parliament. So let's read 37. Uh, it says, where the total of loans, advances, purchases of treasury bills, and securities made under subsection one is 5% of the previous fiscal year's total revenue, the governor shall notify the minister and parliament of the attainment of the limit under subsection two. And then it goes on to say, the finance minister should also go to parliament. So why is the notification? And Dr. Thierry Champion, yes, last week you raised it, so we were on another platform, you raised it. Let's, that is where we should be holding the governor. I'm telling you that Addison is a co-architect of our economic woes now. Yeah, I mean, Ma Martin, let, let, me read to you, let me read to you something that the BOG in the statement said in maybe in reaction to this. It says, mm -hmm. in line with the provisions of the BOG Act 612, as amended, the bank informed the Minister of the Development in its finances. The Minister reported this to Parliament as part of his briefing to Parliament on the IMF program and the domestic debt exchange. No, Evans. At what time? By then, the horses had bolted. And in any event, that doesn't still absolve the Bank of Ghana of its own duty to also report independent. Let's read that part. It says, the governor shall notify the minister and parliament of the attainment of the limit under subsection 2. Last year, you remember when they did it and the Minority got wind that they had printed large sums uh, to force and could lead the charges. The government came and denied that no, 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 nothing was done. There was an overdraft, something, something. Then they whitewashed it. So, how can Addison be saved? He says, Notify minister, notify parliament. Where is the notification? Hmm. Where is it? And, like, that, listen, Addison himself mentioned. You saw expansionary, uh, an expansionary budget going up 23%, and you couldn't pull the brakes because in 2021, we raised 57 billion, right? Uh -huh. So if we raise 57 billion in 2021, why do you give them 45 billion in 2022? Is that 5%? And mm. then if you look at uh, 2020, how much did we raise? The one, the figures I have seen, 2020, we raised 47 point something billion. So why did you give government 35 billion in 2021? It says 5%. If you want to exceed 5% by over 50%, don't you inform our representatives? Don't you? Mm. No, Addison is caught. Look, he's caught. Evans, let me add one sentence. The building, I, I think I have a different take on the building. I asked people who know buildings in Accra, and I got jaw-dropping facts. For the first time, government of Ghana, BOG, is able to build at a far lower cost than the private sector. I hear this building that's under construction. They are doing just about, it's not more than $2,200 uh, per square meter. That's how these buildings, if you are looking at the cost. Understand the other buildings in the neighborhood, the Zenit One, Sanchat, EcoBank, and Co. They are all about. They are way beyond what government, uh, the BOG is doing. This one is not more than $2,200 per square meter. And these buildings, you see, they are going to be, one, uh, two of them will be 27 floors. 
those will be the highest in this country. 27 floors, five down, 22 up. That's mega. And that's the central bank. I understand it has many more security features and the rest. So I'm not exactly sure. And I looked at this document. It's called 2021 Property and Construction, Africa Coast Guide. When you go to page um, 81, yeah, you see the figures. And this, this is a global analysis that they do. So you see that in Ghana, the average, if you want to build, they say our average shows $2,658 per square meter. Yet this particular building is far cheaper. They say it's not exceeding $2,200 per square meter. So I think uh, we should uh, look at this, the way we are bashing this particular building again. Because the question is that, are we saying the whole of uh, th th this period, we shouldn't build at all? I thought we're building roads, we're building hospitals, and these ones were also stimulating the economy. I even also understand, as I said, I ask people in the property industry, is led by Ghanaians, the first time ever that Ghanaians are in charge, 27 floors. It, it's uh, uh, this is, uh, earthquake, uh, earthquake um, boom. resistant. Uh -huh, yeah, top. Yeah, it's resistant. Earth, earthquake uh, resistant. Green is green. Okay. And then, as I said, the Ghanaian factor in it, these are led by Ghanaians. So, and a lot more of other things. I heard very good things. And as for me, the main point I'm saying we should interrogate is that for the first time, a, a, a public institution can build at a far lower cost than the private sector, building at a lot more than $2,200 per square meter, when the average is $2,658, and when comparative buildings in the neighborhood, some did $3,350. So within that range, if you walk, some of those high rises you see there, $3,350 per square meter, far higher, more than $1,000 higher than this building. So for the first time, me, the fact that this is cheaper than the private developers have done, look, I just want to hold back. It, we, we, COVID didn't mean that we were not to do any developmental projects at all. No, what we are crying about is a reckless borrowing, like the attempt to overrun, mm. the speed was too much, it was expansionary. We didn't look at the modeling. If the public financial management access, when you are going to spend, you have to model. The budget yeah. should be accompanied. I mean, 